During this tutorial video, it will be shown how it is possible to implement on an ISP device your own custom algorithm, starting from a template example, which you can find in the Xcube ISPU package. For this tutorial, we will use the Xcube ISPU software package, the STM32 Cube IDE, and finally Unicleo, graphical user interface. If you want to understand which is the hardware to be used for the ISPU, which software you need and how to set up your environment, please check the previous videos on the same topic. So let's start to build your new project from a template. First step, you need to open the Xcube ISPU software package and go in the ISPU folder. Selecting the device, you will find a template folder which we will use to build the example. The first hint I want to highlight here is that you need to open the readme file to see all the advices that will be relevant for your development. First of all, it is explained all the structure of the templates, which are the files and what they are used for. Second, it is explained how to write a .json file, explaining the syntax and providing some examples. Then, since it is the template, let's copy the folder wherever you want. In our case, I will copy it in the desktop and I rename it. This will be our project folder. For this quick tutorial, it will be shown how you can easily implement some counting algorithms in the ISPU device itself. That's why I'm renaming the folder as counter folder. So now let's open the project and let's see what is inside the folder itself. You will find different subfolders. Let's explore them. The first one is Eclipse. In this folder, there are files to use the project with the stm 32 cube ID among other Eclipse-based ID. In the make folder, there is the make file in case you want to use the command line to make your program. Since in our case, we want to use the stm 32 cube ID, let's open it. The first step you need to do is to import the project. Go fetch our project folder, meaning the counter one. We select the whole folder and the project is correctly imported. When importing the project, it has a generic name, ISPU. We can rename it and call it counter. Okay, so let's check which are the different blocks that we have here. The first folder from the top that we see is the ISPU Utils folder, which has different files which are necessary to have, but no need to modify them. Just we will use them during the code generation. We have first the linker script, where it is defined the memory layout of the ISPU. Then we have the register map, which contains the definition of the addresses of all the registers which you can access in the ISPU. Then there is the peripheral, which contains other useful defines that we will use during this tutorial. There is the assembly, the CRT0, which is the startup file which runs at the startup. And finally, there is the global, which contains some macro in assembly. The main and most interesting part is the main.c, where the user needs to write its own code and where we will write and implement our counter algorithms. In this file, we need to write our own code. So what do we see here? There are two main functions, algo00 init and algo00, which are the two functions where the user needs to implement its own algorithm. Then there is the main function, which has not to be modified by the user, which deal with the processing flow and the interrupt generation. Since for this example, we want to generate two counting algorithms, 
one incrementing the counter and the other one decrementing, we need to define them. So let's define the counter as uint8. I define the counter forward and the counter backward. Since they are defined as uint8, we need to include the standard int. So let's start building the forward counter. We define the forward counter in the algo00 initialization function. The initialization function runs one time only after the algorithm has been enabled. It is therefore needed to initialize the algorithm. So we give to the counter the initial value of 0. Then in the run function, that is the algo00 function, it is needed to implement the algorithm step, which is executed at every sample generated by the sensor. So we need to increment the counter. Now, to read it externally, it is needed to bring it to the output registers. How to do so? We need to consult the register map and there is the define of the output register. So let's copy paste it, but how to address it? Well, we need to open the peripherals where there are the defines. Since the counter variable is a uint8, we use this macro to cast the address and we assign the counter forward. We can delete the comment in this line and we generate the interrupt for the first algorithm. Now, to set the backward counter, we can copy and paste what we just did, changing the name of the functions to 01. We implement the backward counter in the initialization function and we give it the value once again equal to 0. On the other side, in the run function, it is needed to make a backward counting, decrementing the values. Then we need to copy it not in the same register. So again, we check the register map and we select the next byte for the output. We can select the output byte that is 00, 0 underscore b and we write the backward counter. In this case, we set for the interrupt the second bit to differentiate the two interrupts. Let's now build the project. So there is one more step to be done. If we open the project folder, there is a configuration.txt file, conf.txt. Let's open it. It contains some parameters for the sensors and for the ISPU itself. In this file, we see some parameter, for example, of the accelerometer, such as the ODR, the full scale, and we can see that the accelerometer is in high performance. Then there are some settings of the ISPU. At the bottom of the page, there is the possibility to enable the algorithm 0 and the interrupt 1 for the algorithm 0. Since we have two algorithms for this exercise, we just need to copy and paste the lines to enable the algorithm 1. In this way, also our second algorithm can run and generate an interrupt. So let's build once more the project. The configuration.txt file is used in the last step of the building process. OK, so now we want to check if what we did works. So let's go in our project folder. Then we go in the Eclipse and then the Release folder. Here I find both the ISPU.h and the ISPU.ucf file, which were created after building the project with the Cube IDE. Since for this tutorial, I want to try our algorithms using uniquely or graphical user interface, I will need to use the UCF file, but to do so, we are missing the JSON file to write the output. So how to build the JSON file? We need to go back to the Xcube ISPU folder. And once again, it is needed to check the readme file that we open at the beginning of this tutorial. There we can see a JSON example which has been written in two different ways. We can copy one of them and we can use it to create the JSON file. Let's write a new 
txt file txt document which has to be named ispu.json and we paste here the example the json file has to have the same name as the ucf file and so we keep the name ispu since for this project we build two algorithms with two outputs we need to give the name to only two outputs there is the forward counter and the backward counter we don't have the third output so we can remove it moreover we don't have output in the int 16 format but in the uint8 so we substitute the script and we save the file finally let's check the results we can open Unicleo, we connect the Nucleo board and we click on start. Let's go fetch the project and let's import the ispu.ucf file that we created. Here we see two algorithms output as expected, one counting forward and one counting backward. So I hope that you enjoyed this hands-on on how to build your first example starting from the template folder in the Xcube ISPU software package.